Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today we're taking a look at a very, very popular, very much reviewed and discussed Spyderco. This is the Spyderco Spidey Chef, designed by, you can see the maker's mark right there, Martin, Marcin Sleesh. Uh, you know, Sleesh Bowie, of course, is the, the most obvious model, but also the Techno, and um, I think he, we've got a new new Sleesh coming out here shortly that was in Spyderco's latest, you know, new model release type of thing that they put out there. And, and look, I've heard a lot of people talk about this knife. I've heard people review it, add it to their top 10 lists, go kind of on and on about how much they enjoy this knife. And so very, very well loved Spyderco. Uh, in fact, I've had a number of retailers tell me that, you know, this is one of those knives where as soon as they get some in stock, they sell out right away. And so very, very popular. And I get it. All right, I can absolutely see why people would love this knife. Now, I've got to say, I, I don't feel quite as strongly about it. I certainly wouldn't say this is a bad knife. I certainly wouldn't say I don't like it. But it doesn't excite me all that much, guys. And I, I you know, I wanted to get that out there at the beginning uh, because I want you to sort of think through this with me. And uh, perhaps as I work my way through, I can, I can kind of share some of my thought process here and, and maybe why I don't find this to be the, just totally the cat's pajamas when it comes to spider coats. Now, again, I'm, I'm absolutely not saying this is a bad knife. Perhaps I'm suggesting it's a little overhyped. All right. So, Let's go ahead and get into this guy. Size and weight on this is seven and seven eighths inches overall, three and five sixteenths on the blade, four and five eighths on the handle, three and five eighths grip area here, and this weighs in at 3.7 ounces. So very lightweight knife, very slim knife, by the way. Uh, this carries like an absolute dream. All right, it is one of those knives that you can carry and just not even know that you have it. It's so, so, so comfortable in pocket that it really does just disappear and it gets top marks for size, weight, and carry. Uh, it really is in that sweet spot. You know, it's right around eight inches. It's got nice, a good amount of blade. Uh, it's capable, you know, just anyway, uh, in terms of what you have to carry for what you get in return in terms of utility, this is very, very nice. Uh, next up is the blade, and the blade, again, is really, really spectacular. Uh, one, I do like this blade shape. It's kind of interesting, it's kind of different, and I do appreciate when I can get something that's different, but it still works really well, and, and I still, you know, it's still very utilitarian. Sometimes, you guys know, and I've reviewed knives on this channel, and I'm sure, you know, scroll through Instagram a little bit, you'll see a lot of knives that look really cool but you you really question whether they're going to work very well this is not that way this is definitely a cool looking knife it looks different it's it's not what everyone is going to have in there everyone is going to have in their pocket and yet this blade shape and you can see just by looking at it that it's highly highly functional so let's start off just for a second on this steel lc200n is such a cool steel it is almost pr corrosion proof or rust proof um it and, and normally uh we have had to sort of settle for um what would you say less than perfect edge retention with uh with uh spider co's rust proof steels the salt series but this steel what makes it stand out the lc 200n is that it actually performs really really well and if you actually if you looked at my video from a few days ago where we looked at the knife nerds uh knife steel nerds testing you you could see that lc 200n held up pretty well in terms of edge retention as well as was pretty balanced when it came to toughness so this is actually a very very good steel in terms of performance and yet it's also highly highly corrosion resistant so absolutely fantastic steel if you're at all concerned about corrosion uh, just a total win in that regard and not only that so this is a, a blade steel that just is not going to rust but guess what it can cut stuff too and it can cut stuff for a long time uh, and in this particular application they've got a nice thin blade stock very thin edge geometry all belly uh, this is this is admittedly it's called the spidey chef it's designed around the idea of a kitchen knife 
And for any kind of slicey task, which often kitchen tasks are, this excels. It really, really shines. Uh, you can see the way the handle and blade is canted. The, the relationship there is great so that you can get down and work on a surface. Okay, so uh, from, you know, just in every respect, this blade is fantastic. The only little hiccup that you could point to here is uh, the way they've done this modified sheep's foot. It makes it a little blunted at the tip. Now, that's nice because it makes it not such a scary knife, but there are certain jobs where you'd like to have, a, a, you know, a little bit more of a pointed blade, something like this. Uh, and, you know, the fact that this doesn't have it, I'm not, you know, it doesn't take anything away from it really, other than certain, you know, if, if you got to get out a sliver or you're trying to open a package and you just want that very fine point to get through the, the package. Um, but overall, absolutely fantastic blade for, you know, shape and ability. Uh, it's not what I would call a heavy duty blade at all, but boy, it can cut stuff. And of course you have that added um, ability to just stay, uh, just never have to worry about corrosion at all. Uh, of course, I didn't mention it, but it's full flat grind, satin finish, sort of modified sheep's foot blade. Uh, just really, really nice looking. And it's nice, something that's different, but also highly usable. Uh, let's move on to lockup and deployment. If you, you know, if you've been watching this video up to this point, you have already noticed that this is a titanium frame lock. All right, you can see they've got a nice little cutout here to allow you to access that lock pretty easily and then shut the knife. Um, and this is where there's a couple little things that I don't appreciate quite as much. Okay, the first one is I find the, the cutout here I don't know, it puts my hand in sort of an awkward situation. I don't know if it's the size of my hands or, or you know, whatever is going on here. I just don't find this the, the nicest knife to be fidgeting with, to lock and unlock. Now, can I take away points for that? No, not at all. Um, but there are a couple other things here that I kind of wish were different. Um, you know, it opens nicely with the thumb. It's fairly smooth feeling. I can spidey flick this knife. I think I did that a second ago, but just in case I didn't, I'll demonstrate. So you can spidey flick it and I, I like it, but I don't love it. There are a couple little things. Uh, one, the washers in here are minute. They're extremely small, little tiny washers. And because of that, I've handled a few of these with some side to side play. Um, often people have loosened the pivot off because they want, you know, a little more drop shutty action and have introduced a little bit of blade play that way um, where I, I feel like a larger washer would add a little bit more stability at least one side you know you could have gone with a large washer on this side smaller washer on the other side to accommodate the lock bar and that's that's why you can see there's very little space here between the pivot and the lock bar thinking of that lock bar we have no lock bar insert now is that an absolute necessity no it's not but i feel like you know, it's not a big deal. And a number of these, in fact, you know, a, a number that I've handled and even as I've watched other people talk about these knives, it's not uncommon to get a little bit of lock stick with these. And that could have been eliminated just with uh, a lock bar insert. Now, I know they were trying to stay away from anything that was um, that was going to rust, but they could have used, you know, LC200N would probably be expensive to use there, but they could have used a, a highly corrosion resistant steel there. Um, to you know to to firm things up a little bit and avoid that lock stick um not not again not the end of the world and here's the thing guys none of these things that i'm talking about really um wreck the knife for me or or you know make me say oh this isn't good they just sort of diminish it a little bit so that the the joy that it provides is not quite as as high for me as other similarly priced and similar material knives um so yeah it's smooth it's reasonably accessible it's it's quite functional you know you can always you know this is one of those knives that opens pretty easily and reliably so i can you know in terms of just comfort and usability uh it's definitely there in terms of some of those little extras that we expect to see on a more expensive knife those things are kind of not here with the, this knife at least to the degree that i would like to see uh moving on to the handle the handle is very nice and i have to say i really like there we go. I really like this sort of working sort of light stonewash finish 
on you know this titanium there are there are other knives that have a similar finish it's a probably my favorite titanium finish it provides a little bit of texture uh makes it you know a knife that you're not scared to use and carry um so in that regard i i have to say i really like the finish on this titanium it's just plain slab slab sided titanium so it's nothing really spectacular uh we've got a wire clip that is reversible to left or right side tip up carry standoff construction which is definitely nice to see and a lanyard hole back here which is tubed you can see the tube running through there between my fingers there uh, so all that stuff is is about what we would expect all right, so nothing really, really notable in terms of construction. Everything is is good, and I'm quite happy with the way this is put together. Uh, the one thing I have to comment on a little bit is the ergonomics here. It's it's good, okay? It's a comfortable knife, but it is not great. It's not amazing. It just doesn't make, you know... Um, <clears throat> So some knives, you get them in hand and you just think, oh, this knife was just meant to be in my hand. And well, this knife is not uncomfortable, it doesn't give me that kind of a, a level of comfort. Uh, so those are a couple little, I know I'm probably being nitpicky here, but uh, those are, that's sort of the downside or some things about this knife that I'm not absolutely crazy about. So having gotten through all that, now I've already done a full comparison video between this and the Manix 2 and the paramilitary too. So, but I'll bring those in, both very, very familiar knives. All right. Uh, so that's how this stacks up in terms of size to some of the more popular spider codes that you may be familiar with. All right. Uh, I wanted to bring in a couple of others. Uh, rat one, I'll just throw in for size because even, you know, if people who don't have a pair of two, they probably have a rat one. So that'll give you a good idea of what you're dealing with in terms of size there. The rat one's going to be about half an inch longer. Now, if you wanted a Spidey Chef sort of size and feel, I find the Bird Raven 2 kind of delivers that. It's a smaller knife. It's not, you know, it's not a knife that's going to intimidate anybody. Uh, and of course, this one is quite cheap. Now, it's not going to be nearly as corrosion resistant, but uh, if this one does rust up really bad, you can easily afford another one. Uh, they have gone up a little bit in price, though. I will point that out. Okay, now let me grab a couple of other comparisons. Here is the Zero Tolerance. Again, similar size, 0470. Better make sure I got the right model. Yes, I do. <laughs> 0470, uh, similar size, um, some minor differences. Uh, it's going to cost, a l I don't know. Actually, I think I've seen these on sale lately, so it may be close in price as well. Uh, what else have I got here for titanium frame locks? Here is the Wii Knives Malice. This happens to be the flame anodized version. Um, zero tolerance, 0562 TI, uh, really, really nice, well-balanced titanium frame lock. Uh, and of course, when we're talking about titanium frame locks, it's always nice to bring in the Incosi. So there is the Chris Reeve knives Incosi, and you can see again, but again, many people are familiar with this knife. So the size will give you a good, good sort of idea of what you're dealing with there. All right. Now, let me issue my sort of last comment that I have to make about why I just don't feel totally in love with this knife. And that is, as a titanium frame lock, uh, at its price point, it just doesn't feel as satisfying as some of these others. So, you know, just any of the tie frame locks that I've shown you here uh, in the comparison portion. Now, I know they're not all the same price, but uh, I would, if you had, if I had to pick any one of these, uh, I would take any of these three over this one pretty well every time. And the reason for that is uh, that, you know, I don't need the corrosion resistance. I just, I've never had a problem with a knife rusting on me. Uh, I live in a fairly dry climate, although, you know, not as dry as some places, but I just, I don't have any problems with rust. And so because of that, I feel like I have to measure this against other titanium frame locks that maybe don't have that one special feature okay and that that special feature is truly impressive and that is you know the corrosion resistance on this is at a whole different level than anything else that i've shown you but but to me that's not that special because i don't 
my I don't have a problem with knives rusting. Even my D2 knives, you know, I've had this Rat 1 for years, and you can see there's it, this is not even a stainless steel, and there's no rust on it. So um, to me, that feature doesn't sort of win the day and, and just knock every other knife out of contention. Other things like ergonomics and, and flippability and how it feels in hand and, you know, all those kinds of things uh, kind of outweigh the fact that this can't rust. And, and by the way, don't get me wrong. I think that it's really, really cool. All right. And I definitely like this knife a lot. I get why people like it as much as they do. Uh, but I can also see what, but I guess I just want to point out that it, it's unless you need that, that corrosion resistance, when you take that particular feature away, this doesn't stack up super, super well against the various other options that are out there. I mean, it's it's as good, and, and if you love the design, and if you're a huge fan of Marcin Sleesh type of thing, uh, hey, it makes perfect sense, all right? Um, and, and so that's that's sort of my overall take on this knife. I like it but I don't love it. I like it, but I wouldn't pick it over my other titanium frame lock options. And I love titanium frame locks, uh, but I just feel like there's there's options out there that I would prefer over this one, um, even at, uh, and, and this is at a lower price point. I think these are like 230 or something like that. So that's gonna be a little cheaper than, than most ZTs. It's gonna be a little cheaper than most Wii's, which I definitely appreciate that aspect. But for me, uh, I would rather pay, you know, a, a little bit extra or wait for a sale and get something just a little more satisfying. Like this knife right here uh, is is just such a fun knife and so, so perfectly done that, you know, I would take, you know, this is the 0470 we already mentioned, uh, that I, I feel like in a world where, you know, I could have this as an option, I'm probably not going to go to this very often. So there you go, guys. That's my overall take. I hope everyone isn't too mad at me for not sharing the love that everyone feels for this knife. And again, it's I'm not at all saying it's a bad knife. It's actually a really, really cool knife. It's just not one that engenders the same kind of response in me as some of the other knives that I have. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget to head over to Southern Edge Knife Works and pick one of these up. Uh, you can save 15% using my discount code. Uh, same is true over at White Mountain Knives. You can use my discount code, save 10%. Can't promise either of those places will have it in stock, but if they don't, you can look around for other stuff as well. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.